Thank you. I would like to start by asking all the women in the audience to raise a hand. Thank you. And congratulations. If you raised your hand, you are more likely to live a long life compared to us who didn't. This data shows the, expect the life expectancy in 183 nations during the last 70 years using the Gapminder software. Men are on the x-axis and females are on the y. Every circle represents data from one nation, and if there was no sex difference, the circles would be on the black line in the middle. For example, in Sweden, Men are expected to live on average about 81 years, and females about 84 years, a difference of about three years. As you can see, men in the entire world live shorter lives, both in countries with a shorter life expectancy and in countries with a longer life expectancy, such as Japan, the country with the longest life expectancy, where the difference is more than six years. The global average difference is about five years, and this has been known for centuries, but the underlying mechanisms have been poorly understood. And now I know what you're thinking, right? We all have some ideas why men live short lives, right? <laughs> Take a look at these guys. <laughs> they brought their sandwich toaster <laughs> In the pool. <laughs> okay. And these guys. <laughs> this is my favorite, actually. <laughs> e Internet is full of evidence why men live shorter lives. <laughs> and there are actually some truth in these pictures. Men are overrepresented in accidents and in mortality caused by accidents. But it's not enough to explain this global pattern. But we have discovered that the male-specific genetic risk factor, called LOI, can help explain this sex difference. So what is LOI? It stands for loss of chromosome Y, and it's a somatic mutation occurring during lifetime in the blood cells of men. For example, in this old man, we can call him Ted. You can see that some of his blood cells have a normal setup of chromosomes, 46XY, and other cells are without the entire Y chromosome. Ted is affected with LOI. We know that age, smoking, and genetic background are risk factors to be affected with LOI. We see that 60%, 10% of 60-year-old men, 20% of 80-year-old men, and more than half of 90-year-old men have lost their Y chromosome in more than 10% of their blood cells. Smokers have up to four times increased risk to be affected, and we see that the effect is transient and dose-dependent. Also, the genetic variants that we inherit from our parents influence the risk to be affected with Lloyd during lifetime. So, a frequent loss of the Y chromosome in the hematopoietic cells have been known to occur for more than 50 years, first described in this paper from 1963. But it was long considered a phenotypically neutral and age-related event. But about five years ago, I discovered that men with loss of Y in their blood cells actually have an increased risk for all-course mortality. As you see here, men with LOI survived only half as long as men without this mutation. So we this study was performed by measuring LOI in the blood at, in about 1,200 aging men, between 70 to 83 years of age, and by following them for up to 22 years, we could see that men with loss of Y in the beginning of the study survived on average 5.5 years, and that men without loss of Y survived on average 11 years. In addition to all-course mortality, we also saw that men with LOI had an increased risk to be diagnosed with and die from cancer. And these findings have now been replicated by others, 
the all-course mortality in the UK Biobank, a huge study of more than 200,000 men. The cancer-related outcomes is now seen that men with loss of eye in their blood cells have an increased risk for prostate cancer, colorectal cancer, bladder cancer, and testicular cancer. We also see that men with loy in their blood cells have an increased risk for Alzheimer's disease and other outcomes such as AMD, the number one cause of blindness in the world, schizophrenia, suicide completion, and some autoimmune conditions. Some recent papers even describe that men with loy have an increased risk for cardiovascular events and diabetes. But how can loy in blood cells be associated with increased risk for disease in other organs? We don't know this yet. But the likely hypothesis is that loy in the immune cells in the blood have, will have a reduced ability to fight disease. This figure shows a process called cancer immunosurveillance. In the before picture, you have a cancer and an immune cell, and the after picture, the cancer is dead. Immune cells without the Y chromosome might not be as good as performing these very vital functions in the body, increasing risk for many different disorders. In our ongoing research, we're now trying to understand the causality between, behind the association that we have observed. Regardless of the mechanism, however, we know today that men with loss of Y have an increased risk for mortality and many forms of human disorders. Many. Yeah. Since Loy is a male-specific genetic risk factor, this can help explain why men in the entire world live shorter lives compared to women. So the next question is, can we do something about this? And the answer to this question is yes, we can do something. By performing Lloyd testing of middle-aged and aging men, we could identify, for example, the 10% of the 60-year-old men with an increased risk for disease. By performing medical checkups of these men, we would be able to diagnose disease at an earlier stage, and this could lead to a better use of preventive uh, and personalized precision medicine, which is associated with better outcomes. For example, in most forms of cancer, it's not the primary tumor that kills, it's the metastatic spread that is very dangerous. By performing PET scans of all men with Loy, we would be able to identify primary tumors before they start spreading, and this would save lives. I have a vision that by introducing Lloyd tests in clinics, we could do something about this picture and reduce the high male mortality so that we can live and grow old together. Thank you.